good morning student in the last lecture we studied about the pericardium and the external features of the heart in this lecture we are going to study the interior of the heart and its blood supply so first we will study the right atrium it is a thin wall structure and it receives the venous blood it forms the part of the sternocostal surface sulcus terminalis is visible group from the opening of the superior vena cava to the opening of the inferior vena cava interior of the right atrium the cavity of the right atrium is divisible into three parts first is the sinus venorum which is the smooth part located posterior second part is the right atrium proper along with the right auricle forms the rough part so here is the right atrium proper along with the right auricle it forms the rough part and here is the smooth part vestibule or the tricuspid wall here is the vestibule or the tricuspid wall it forms the floor or the antero inferior part of the right atrium so the interior of the right atrium is divisible into three parts sinus venarum which is the smooth part located posteriorly here <clears throat> then right atrium proper along with the right auricle it forms the rough part here then the third part is the vestibule or the tricuspid wall here is the vestibule or the tricuspid wall so here you can see the opening of the superior vena cava here is the opening of the inferior vena cava here is the interior of the right atrium first we will see the sinus venarum which is the smooth part <coughs> of the right atrium and it is located posteriorly it shows the following feature it shows the opening of the superior vena cava at the roof of the right atrium here you can nicely appreciate the opening of the superior vena cava which is present at the roof of the right atrium okay then the opening of the inferior vena cava which is situated in the lower and the posterior part of the atrium near the interatrial septum here is the interatrial septum and near the interatrial septum there is the opening of the inferior vena cava <coughs> then the third opening is the opening of the coronary sinus here is the opening of the coronary sinus located between the opening of the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid wall or the atrioventricular wall so smooth part which is located posteriorly shows the opening of the superior vena cava at the roof of the right atrium then you can see the opening of the inferior vena cava which is situated in the lower and the posterior part of the atrium here Okay. then the opening of the coronary sinus which is situated between the opening of the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid wall or the atrioventricular opening <clears throat> then you are going to see the multiple small opening of the vena cordis minimi or the thebaian vein here you can see these are the multiple small opening which are present in the right atrium they are known as the opening of the vena cordis minimi or the openings of the thebaceous vein <clears throat> right atrium proper or the anterior rough part or the pectinate part vista terminalis demarcates the rough and the smooth parts of the right atrium it corresponds to the sulcus terminalis on the external surface you know that the sulcus terminalis is present on the external surface of the right atrium and it is demarcated on the 
interior of the, in the interior of the right atrium as a crista terminalis which demarcates the rough and the smooth parts of the right atrium it is a c shaped muscular ridge it starts from the upper end of the interatrial septum passes in front of the superior opening of the superior vena cava and then turns along its lateral margin downward to reach the opening of the inferior vena cava so crista terminalis is muscular ridge which is c shaped and it starts from the upper end of the interatrial septum then it passes in front of the opening of the superior vena cava then it turns along its lateral margin downwards to reach the opening of the inferior vena cava <clears throat> so here you can nicely appreciate the crista terminalis which demarcates the smooth part and the rough part okay this is the rough part along from here to here and <clears throat> crista terminalis demarcates the rough part and the rough part and the smooth parts okay it starts from the upper part of the interatrial septum then the opening uh, opening of the superior vena cava then it take the turns and then it runs downwards and up to the inferior vena cava so you can nicely appreciate it muscular pectinity which resembles like a bow these they are the small parallel muscular ridges extending from the crista into the right auricle dense trabeculations of the muscle inside the right auricle makes it a potential site for thrombi formation the thrombi dislodged from the right atrium enters the pulmonary circulation and may produce the pulmonary embolism so here are the muscular pectinity they are resembling like a comb okay now coming to the vestibule of the tricuspid valve which is the antero inferior part of the floor of the right atrium it leads into the tricuspid opening here cox triangle boundaries <clears throat> posteriorly antero medial margin of the coronary sinus antero medial margin of the coronary sinus superiorly there is tendon of todero here is the tendon of todero which is nothing but the sub endocardial ridge anteriorly there is the base of the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve so these are the boundaries of the cox triangle Uh, posteriorly it is bounded by the antero medial margin of the coronary sinus superiorly by the tendon of the todero anteriorly by the base of the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve so here you can appreciate the tendon of todero okay it is in the floor of the right atrium so the box triangle is present in the floor of the right atrium near the lower end of the interatrial septum a vein node lies in this area near the lower end of the interatrial septum that is the importance of the cox triangle <coughs> so again super uh, showing the cox triangle superiorly bounded by the tendon of todero okay then anteriorly by the base of the septal cusps of the tricuspid valve and posteriorly antero medial margin of the coronary sinus so these are the boundaries of the cox triangle and it av node lies in this cox triangle interatrial septum it forms the septal or the postero medial wall of the right atrium septal wall shows the fossa ovalis here is the fossa ovalis which is oval membranous depressed portion is known as the fossa ovalis a curved ridge called the limbus fossa ovalis from the superior right and the left margin of the fossa ovalis so this is the fossa sorry this is the 
fossa ovalis and which is bounded by a curved ridge. Here is the curved ridge, black arrow showing the curved ridge. Okay, and it forms the superior right and the left margins of the fossa ovalis. So, fossa ovalis and the limbus indicate the site of foramen ovale. It indicates the site of foramen ovale, that is the embryology, embryological structure. Okay, so interatrial septum shows oval depressed area that is known as the fossa ovalis here and it is bounded by the curved ridge and that curved ridge is known as the limbus fossa ovalis. Right auricle, coming to the applied anatomy, right auricle is the potential site for formation of the thromba which leads to pulmonary embolism. It is often excised in the cardiopulmonary bypass. Triangle of Cox is an anatomical landmark for the AV node. Vista terminalis and the atrial septum are the sites for the arrhythmia. Inferior vena cava opening is used for sending the catheters due to its wider diameter. Fossa ovalis is used for the transeptal puncture. Coming to the left atrium, here you can appreciate the left, uh, left atrium which shows the opening of the pulmonary veins. Coming to the interior of the left atrium. The interior surface of the left atrium is divided into two parts. Inflow part which receives the blood from the pulmonary veins, its internal surface is put. So here is the inflow part which receives the opening of the pulmonary veins. Outflow portion located anteriorly and includes the left auricle. Here is the left auricle. So here is the outflow portion. It is lined by the pectinate muscle. So interior of the Left atrium shows the inflow portion and the outflow portion. The inflow part receives the blood from the pulmonary veins and its internal surface is smooth. While outflow portion is located anteriorly and it includes the left auricle. Openings of the left atrium. There are four openings of the pulmonary veins in the posterior wall of the left atria. Also, there are number of small openings of the veni cordis minimi. Left atrioventricular opening, which is guarded by the mitral wall. There are two cusps of this mitral wall. So, this is the mitral wall. That is the left atrioventricular opening. So, the left atrium has four pulmonary veins opening here, okay, then small number of openings of the vene cordis minimi, then there is opening of the left atrioventricular opening which is guarded by the mitral wall. This is the mitral wall and this is the left atrioventricular opening, okay. So, for the spotting you may get question like this. Uh, identify this chamber and write down the structure opening in it. So the structure opening in it are openings of the four pulmonary veins, small openings for the vene cordis minimi and the left atrioventricular opening. Okay. Now coming to the interior of the right ventricle. The shape of the right ventricle is crescentric and it is divisible into inflowing rough part or the ventricle proper, outflowing smooth part and part. Okay, so inflowing rough part or the ventricular part receives the blood from the right atrium through the right atrioventricular open. 
outflowing smooth part that is also known as the infundibular or infundibulum or the conus arteriosus which ejects the blood into the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary open so outflowing part is smooth which is also known as the infundibulum it ejects the blood into the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary opening supraventricular crest is the largest muscular bridge which separates the outflow and the inflow parts of the right ventricle so between the inflow and the outflow part you are going to see the supraventricular crest it is a largest muscular bridge present in the right ventricle and it separates the outflow and the inflow part of the right ventricle okay coming to the features of the inflow parts right atrioventricular opening and the tricuspid wall complex is present in the inflow part the trabeculi carni right atrioventricular opening and the tricuspid wall complex shows the right atrioventricular opening which is oval or the circular circumference circumference varies between the 10 to 12 cm it accommodates the tips of the three finger so inflow part shows the two important structure right atrioventricular opening and the tricuspid wall complex and second part is the trabeculi carna the right uh, the right atrioventricular opening and the tricuspid wall complex consist of right atrioventricular opening which is oval or circular in shape the circumference varies between 10 to 12 cm and it accommodates the tips of the three finger here is the atrioventricular opening with the tricuspid wall complex okay tricuspid wall complex which guards the atrioventricular open it includes the atrioventricular opening tricuspid annulus leaflets or the cusp of the tricuspid wall cordae tendineae and the papillary muscle so here is the atrioventricular opening then tricuspid annulus here is the tricuspid annulus okay then cusp or the leaflets of the tricuspid wall 1 2 and the 3 okay then cordae tendineae these are the cordae tendineae and these are the papillary muscles okay tricuspid annulus is the collagenous ring surrounding the opening where the bases of the cusp are attached so here is the tricuspid annulus which is a collagenous ring surrounding the opening where the bases of the cusp are attached leaflets there are three leaflets anterior posterior and the septal so middle one is known as the septal here is the posterior and the posterior leaflet and the anterior leaflet so anterior leaflet septal leaflet and the posterior so in between the anterior and the posterior leaflet there is a septal leaflet which projects into the ventricular cavity cordae tendineae are the endothelial covered collagenous threads they are of two types here you can see cordae tendineae okay they are of two types false and the true cordae tendineae false cordae tendineae extends irregularly connecting the ventricular walls true cordae tendineae connects the apical third of the papillary muscle to the free margins and the ventricular surface of the tricuspid wall complex trabeculi carni are the muscular projections walls of the inflow tract is rough and presents trabeculi carni which consist of ridges bridges and the papillary muscle so <coughs> trabeculi carni are nothing but the muscular projection they are of three types ridges 
just ridges are the elevations bridges they are attached at the two ends and in the middle there is a gap and the papillary muscles these are the papillary muscles which are connected uh, through the quadriceps to the cusp of the leaflets of the atrioventricular wall ridges are the linear elevations found all over the cavity supraventricular crest it extend downwards and to the right from the ventricular septum to the right atrioventricular opening ridges these are the elevations which are fixed at two ends but remains free in between septo marginal trabecula or which is also known as the moderator band passes from the interventricular septum to the base of the anterior papillary muscle that is known as the septo marginal trabecula or the moderator band the function of this moderator band is it carries the right branch of the atrioventricular bundle in in it and it prevents the over distension or over distension of the right ventricle hence it is known as the moderator band so septo marginal trabecula is known as the moderator band because it prevents the over distension of the right ventricle okay and this septo marginal trabecula passes from the interventricular septum to the base of the anterior papillary muscle and it carries the right branch of the ag bundle so here is the anterior papillary muscle and here is the moderator band you can nicely appreciate the moderator band here okay same way here also you can appreciate the moderator band anterior papillary muscle and the moderator band papillary muscles are the conical muscular projections these are the conical muscular projections they are known as the papillary muscles usually they are three in numbers depending on their attachment to the ventricular wall they are anterior posterior and the septum anterior papillary muscle here you can see okay this will be the posterior and this here somewhere septum so papillary muscles are the conical muscular projection they are usually three in numbers depending on their attachment to the ventricular wall their names are anterior posterior and the septum so these are the trabecular carpi these are the ridges these are the papillary muscles and these are the body tendon okay anterior papillary muscle these are the thread like structure are the cord tendon these are the trabecular carpi left ventricular it has inflow portion and the outflow portion inflow portion shows walls of uh, portions are lined by the trabecular carpi the inflow portion of the left ventricle is lined by the trabecular carpi two papillary muscles present which are attached to the cusp of the mitral wall in the right ventricle there are three papillary muscles while in the left ventricle there are three uh, two papillary muscles okay remember outflow portion is known as the aortic vestibule it is smooth wall with no trabecular carpi so the left ventricle shows the inflow portion and the outflow portion the inflow portion show, uh, is lined by the trabecular carpi and two papillary muscles are present in the left ventricle outflow portion is also known as the aortic vestibule it is smooth walled and no trabecular carpi are present there so here are the trabecular carpi 
this is the posterior papillary muscle here is the anterior papillary muscle remember that only two papillary muscles are present in the left ventricle while in the right ventricle there are three papillary muscles and these are the body tendons openings in the left ventricle left atrioventricular orifice and the aortic or aortic orifice walls mitral wall and the aortic wall so here is the mitral wall anterior papillary muscle posterior papillary muscle here is the inflow portion and here is the aorta now coming to the blood supply of the heart heart is supplied by the coronary arteries and its branches and the venous drainage of the heart is done by the coronary sinus and the trabecular coronary arteries are vasa majorum of the ascending aorta anatomically they are not the end arteries but functionally these are the end arteries only these are the only arteries where the blood flows in the diastole so the coronary arteries are the vasa majorum of the ascending aorta anatomically they are not the end arteries but functionally these are the end arteries these are the only arteries where blood flows in the diastole arteries supplying heart are two coronary arteries which are arising from the ascending aorta right coronary artery and the left coronary artery both arteries run in the coronary sulcus okay so here is the right coronary artery and here is the left coronary artery right coronary artery has small diameter as compared to the left coronary artery it arises from the anterior aortic sinus so these are the aortic sinuses and here is the anterior aortic sinus from where the right coronary artery takes origin okay 5% of the cases supplies the sno so the right coronary artery is smaller in diameter as compared to the left coronary artery it arises from the anterior aortic sinus and 60 in 65% of the cases it supplies the sa no right coronary artery first passes forward and to the right to emerge on the surface of the heart between the root of the pulmonary trunk and the right auricular so from here the right coronary artery arises between the pulmonary trunk and the right auricular okay then it runs downwards in the right anterior coronary sulcus to the junction of the right and the inferior border to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart so it will run in the right atrioventricular groove uh, and reach the diaphragmatic sulcus finally it reaches the posterior interventricular groove and terminates by anastomosis with the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery at the crux so the right coronary artery first passes forward to the right to emerge on the surface of the heart between the root of the pulmonary trunk and the right auricular then it runs downwards in the right coronary sulcus to the junction of the right and the inferior border of the border to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart okay and finally it is the posterior interventricular groove and terminates by anastomosis with the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery at the crux branches of the right coronary artery are at atrial branches anterior or is in is branch anterior branches and the posterior and the lateral branches 
one of the anterior branch goes to the SNO. Then right porous artery forms the circle around the pulmonary trunk. Ventricular branches, they are anterior and the posterior. Right marginal artery, posterior interventricular branch gives the septal branch and the aminodal branch. So the five branches of the right coronary artery, atrial branches, right porous artery, ventricular branches, right marginal artery and the posterior interventricular branch. Area of distribution of the right coronary artery. It supplies right atria, right ventricle, posterior one third part of the interventricular septum, conducting system of the heart that is the SA and the AV nodes. Coming to the left coronary artery, it is larger in diameter as compared to the right coronary artery. It arises from the left posterior aortic sinus of the ascending aorta. First, it runs forwards and to the left. It emerges between the pulmonary trunk and the left aorta. It gives anterior interventricular branch and further continuation of the left coronary artery is called as a circumflex artery. It terminates by anastomosing with the right coronary artery. Branches of the left coronary artery are anterior interventricular branch gives ventricular branches, septal branches, anterior, it supplies the anterior two-third of the interventricular septum, then left corner branch, circumflex branch gives left marginal artery, anterior and posterior ventricular branches, atrial branches. So the branches of the left coronary artery, anterior interventricular branch and the circumflex branch. Then branches from the anterior interventricular artery are ventricular branches, septal branches and the left coronal branch. Branches from the circumflex artery are left marginal artery, anterior and posterior ventricular branches and the atrial branch. Area of distribution of the left coronary artery are left atrium, ventricles, anterior part of the interventricular septum, a part of the left branch of the AV bundle. So here you can see the left coronary artery. Here is the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery and anterior interventricular branch. Okay. Cardiac dominance. 10% of the hearts. In 10% of the heart, the right coronary artery is smaller and is not due the posterior interventricular branch. In these cases, the left coronary artery provides the posterior interventricular branch. In such cases, it is called as a left dominance. Mostly the right coronary artery gives the Posterior interventricular artery, such hearts are called as a right dominant. So the cardiac dominance is the left dom either left dominant or the right dominant, depending upon the origin of the posterior interventricular artery. If it arises from the left coronary artery, then it is known as the left dominant heart. And when it arises from the right coronary artery, then it is known as the right dominant heart. Okay. Coming to the venous drainage of the heart. Venous blood from the heart drains into the right atrium through the coronary sinus, anterior cardiac veins, and the mini cordis minimus, minimi or the tibaceous vein. So, coronary sinus anterior cardiac veins and, and vini cordis minimi or the thebaceous veins drains the venous blood from the heart into the right atrium. Coronary sinus.
tributaries of the coronary sinus are great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, posterior vein of the left ventricle, and the oblique vein of the left atrium. Coronary sinus is 2 to 3 cm long, situated in the left posterior coronary sulcus. Here is the coronary sinus. It opens into the right atrium. We have seen the opening of the coronary sinus in the right atrium. And it is guarded, on the opening of the coronary sinus is guarded by the Thibetian wall. Tributaries of the coronary sinus are great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, posterior vein of the left ventricle and the oblique vein of the left atrium. So the coronary sinus is two to three centimeter long. It is situated in the left posterior coronary sulcus. It opens into the right atrium and it is the opening of the coronary sinus is guarded by the Thibetian wall. Okay, and the tributaries of the coronary sinus are great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, posterior vein of the left ventricle, oblique vein of the left atrium. Veins which do not join the coronary sinus are anterior cardiac veins, veni cordis minimi, and some sometimes right marginal veins. These three veins, they do not join the coronary sinus. They separately opens into the right atrium. Coming to the clinical anatomy. Narrowing of the wall of the orifice due to the fusion of the cusp is known as the stenosis. Example, mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis. When there is narrowing of the walls of the opening of the mitral opening, then it is known as the stenosis. Thrombosis of the coronary artery is a common cause of the sudden death in person. Coronary angiography determines the site of narrowing or the occlusion of the coronary arteries or their branches. So, Coronary angiography, which determines the site of narrowing or the occlusion of the coronary arteries or their branches. Angioplasty helps in the removal of small blockage. If there is a large segment or multiple sites of blockage, coronary bypass is done. Rapid pulse or the increased heart rate is known as the tachycardia. Slow pulse or the decreased heart rate is called as a bradycardia and irregular pulse or the irregular heart rate is called as a arrhythmia. So three important entities, tachycardia means there is an increase in the heart rate or the rapid pulse. Bradycardia means there is a decrease in the heart rate or the slow pulse. Irregular pulse or the Irregular heart rate is known as the arrhythmia. Angina pectoris. Incomplete obstruction of the coronary artery due to the atherosclerotic plaque results in the decreased blood supply to the heart and which leads to insufficient oxygen and severe pain in the chest rejoin also in the left arm is known as the angina pectoris. Myocardial infarction, complete obstruction of the coronary artery due to the thrombosis results in the death of the myocardium that is also known as the heart attack. So angina pectoris and the <coughs> myocardial infarction. In the angina pectoris, there is an incomplete obstruction of the coronary artery due, due to the atherosclerotic plug which results in the decrease in the blood supply to the heart. So there is decrease in uh, decrease of the insufficient oxygen, which leads to severe pain in the chest and also pain in the left arm. Myocardial infarction, there is a complete obstruction of the coronary artery due to the thrombosis, which results in the death of the myocardium 
and which is also known as the heart attack. So thanks for listening. You may get question on the blood supply of the heart or short note on the left or the right coronary artery. Then interior of the right atrium and the interior of the left, uh, sorry, the right ventricle. Also for the spotting heart is very important. So read it carefully. Openings in the right atrium, openings in the right ventricle, openings in the left atrium are important for the spotting point of view. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening.